First fighter is Superfly Tony Brown, 27 years of age, 5 and 1. Now, Tony is a very accomplished amateur boxer, fought for Ireland in the European Games, was on the verge of going to the Olympics, was in the Irish elite setup for many years. So you don't get to that level if you aren't a serious fighter. So Tony's been programmed to fight the best fighters in the world in the amateurs, right? So now he's looking to translate that in professional boxing. He's a super middleweight, very good jab, very good at gauging distance, can fight on the inside, decent hand speed, and he's going to be a problem. He really is. I've seen Tony spar world-class fighters, and he holds his own. And fighters who were levels above him in professional boxing, who have had more, more fights, who have fought for titles, who were on the verge of fighting for world titles. And I've seen Tony spar them, and he holds he hold his own. And Tony is a very, very good fighter. When Tony's at his best is when he's fluid, right? when he's not thinking about it so much, where he's just letting it go, letting the combinations go. He's loose, he's moving around, and he's got a variety of shots. His shot selection is very good, and he's a dangerous fighter, Tony. He really is. He's not in this game to be a journeyman or to be the away fighter. He wants to be a world champion. Now, yes, it's a tough ask, right? But that's Tony's mentality. I've been around him. He's Sometimes he trains that hard, you actually have to tell him, not Tony, just take a step back. Right? His mindset is solid as a rock. He just has one goal and that's to get to the top of the game wherever that may be tony is signed by a promotional outlet called star boxing in america who promote the likes of carlos takim joe smith jr who's the uh, light heavyweight champion wbo light heavyweight champion so they're a good promotional outlet it's a good start for tony and hopefully they back him because tony's one of them guys who you can build into a star with the pandemic Tony had to travel to Europe and he had to fight regularly. He can't fight at home. We all know there's no professional shows in Dublin. So his back's against the wall in that aspect. Can't fight in front of his home fans. So he's had to take himself away and fight abroad. And he's fought tough fights. He fought uh, a former world champion in Casemiro. Granted, Casemiro was a world champion back in 2005. He did, he did need a Zimmerfane to get to the ring. But <laughs> no, I'm joking. It was a good fight for Tony. Going in there, doesn't matter how old the fight is, you're going in against a former world champion. There's still things you can learn, and Tony bucks his head off that night. And Tony Brown has lost a fight, but I'm going to be completely honest with you. And um, the gaffer Stephen O'Rourke will tell you this. I mean, I'm as honest as they come. I think he shouldn't have took that fight. What happened with Tony was he fought a tough fight. I think this was in. Um, this was in May for a tough fight I think against an Italian bloke and it went eight rounds it went full eight rounds and Tony because Tony wants to fast track himself he doesn't want to take fight he doesn't want to fight bums for four rounds you know he wants to test himself so he's fighting a guy who's 2-0 and, oh, and I mean the guy could turn out to be a world champion he could turn out to be a European champion you don't know when you're fighting someone who's 2-0 oh, or 1-0 oh, you don't know how good they potentially can be and Tony had a great fight with him it was a war back and forth real gut check one of them fights where you can tick off early on you can say you know what I've gone through that and it was all great and then I think Tony's mentality is he wanted to get another fight he wanted to get another win on the resume because he just wants to fast track himself he's that strong minded and if it look, hindsight's a good thing but he took a fight three weeks after against um, a Dutch fellow called Chico Carassi who I don't believe is on Tony's level um, he's an awkward bloke tall he was, a, he was a kickboxer pretty good fighter not a bum very, looked very awkward and gangly but was a decent fighter and he was as fresh as a daisy he came in tony had fought three weeks before shouldn't have fought i mean he should have had a rest for two weeks never mind sparring and fighting again and his timing was completely off now people may say this is excuses or whatever you, you can think that i'm just giving you valid reasons where straight away again it was eight rounds and tony's timing was off immediately and I, i've said to myself he's in trouble here and you know what he showed the heart of a fucking lion because he was fucked. Let me tell you, a lot of fighters would have packed it in. They would have said, ah, oh, I've had enough here. I'm fighting away from him. They would have 
packed it in. Tony did it. He carried on. Never stopped believing he could win the fight and pushed the pace. Never got stopped. Didn't look like getting stopped. When really he had nothing left. His energy left. He was just gone. He was just, just not with Tony Brown, who we know. And he did lose the fight. Um, I wasn't happy with him taking that fight. I don't think, you know, um, that's just me being honest. I think he'll tell you that. The person who arranged that fight for Tony, I'm not happy with. Which wasn't the right thing to do. However, it is boxing and things happen. People make mistakes and it's a learning curve, you know. They're navigating themselves through the professional ranks. And um, and looking back, that might it might be a blessing in disguise as lost for Tony. You don't know. I do believe that Tony is a serious problem and with the right backing, with the right management team, the right promotional team, he's going to go a long way in boxing. He's got the right mentality for it, he's got all the tools and I think you'll see a lot of superfly Tony Brown. Second fighter is Tiernan Bradley. Now Tiernan is very well known in Ireland. His profile blew up years ago when he was involved in one of the biggest boxing events of all time and that's conor mcgregor and floyd mayweather he was slap bang in the middle of that fight he was drafted in as conor mcgregor's main sparring partner to mimic floyd mayweather i mean you're not, you're not shit are you if you're being asked to copy floyd mayweather are you now yes we all know the fight wasn't a competitive fight we all know floyd beat conor comprehensively right but before that fight no one can argue the event the magnitude of it never seen anything like it never seen press conferences like it we won't ever see that again and Tiernan was in the middle of it he was sparring with McGregor he was there in that infamous sparring session with Paul and Malinaji. he was around all the fighters and he saw the feel what he had that big fight feel he saw that he saw what a, what it takes to be in a big fight and it was great experience for Tiernan after that he took a break from boxing it was not ideal he'll probably tell you that himself um, and he sort of went on the missing list for a few years too. And he, was, um, he just took a complete break from the sport. A few years ago, he came back, went to Ray Walsh's gym under Stephen O'Rourke, the gaffer, the trainer, the head coach. And Stephen's turned him into Stephen's turned him into a professional fighter. Tiernan was a great amateur, won multiple Irish titles, beat quality fighters, and was known as a precocious talent was known in Ireland as a precocious talent, as a serious talent. And he's one of those fighters, Tiernan, where he's naturally gifted. He's one of the most naturally gifted fighters you'll come across. All the talent in the world, switch hits, can fight southpaw, has power, great timing, great timing, great distance, great judgment of distance, great shot selection. And he's a serious fighter. He's a problem for anyone, Tiernan. He really is. He's one of those fighters where boxing comes natural to him. Everything's natural. He just flows. He just doesn't have to think about it. And he's an artist in there. He really is. He, can, he creates scenarios, creates traps for his opponents. He's a very, very clever fighter. Tiernan is 5-0 and at the moment. Well to wait. And uh, he, again, he's, he's unsigned at the moment. He's not signed to a promotional company. He's keeping his options uh, open. And I'm telling you, if you're a promoter, you're a manager, get involved with Tiernan and Bradley. He is an unbelievable talent. He's already made stars. He's got a fan base, right? He's got all the ability in the world. He just needs a serious promoter behind him. And I believe that people will be queuing up to sign him if they take the time to understand his story. I mean, if, if I'm a promotional company, I'm looking what talent's out there and I see Tane and Bradley he's not signed with anyone fucking hell I'm getting him on the phone straight away and getting him signed to my promotional stable he is a serious fighter Tane and I believe Tane and has the ability to be a world champion I really believe that he just needs that he just needs that platform now to really shine and to really give him a goal and I believe that that will happen and I think it won't be long where you see Tane in the big fights Keep an eye out for him. Next fighter is Ryan O'Rourke, the gaffer's son. Ryan is only 22 years of age, and I believe he's the most, uh, I believe he's the best kept secret in boxing. I really do. Ryan is an unbelievable fighter, a very, very good fighter. He's been boxing since he was a young kid. 
with his, his dad being his trainer and you can imagine everything's boxing he's been in the gym three four years of age you know <laughs> so boxing to him is as natural as a fish in water you know it's, it's just like breathing unbelievable talent does everything well great timing knows how to cut knows how to create angles very good on the inside as well very good on the outside as well doesn't look like it he's really not got his man strength but he can bully you on the inside he knows he's very very comfortable on the inside Stephen A. walks big fingers he likes his fighters to be able to fight a variety of styles it's not just one can attack and one can defend well it's you can all attack well you can all defend well you can all cut angles and they can all fight a variety of styles again I've seen Ryan fight world-class fighters and he's done very well against them and 22 years of age, I believe Ryan can get to world level. I'm back in 100%. And um, I've seen him close up, right? So I'm not just talking as a fan here or not, not talking about knowledge. I've seen him spar, I've seen him fight close up. I know how good this kid is. Again, he's signed by Star Boxing in America, and he's looking, I think he believes he's looking to make his debut with them in April on the card with Tony Brown. The reason why he's not fought for Star Boxing is because of the pandemic, and it's been very hard and not been able to fly to America. Um, now, that's not the case anymore. You're going to see them on Star Boxing shows, and if I'm star boxing, I'm going to back this kid because this kid is an unbelievable talent. Very unassuming, great guy, not interested in the limelight, doesn't care. All he wants to do is just box. It's all he does is just very natural to him. One of the fights that he took early on in his career, Ryan, is I think he was only 21 at the time and he fought in his fourth fight a fighter called Sonny Martinez, who's very well known in England now. He's the bloke who fought Campbell Hatton on the Joshua Newshead undercard. It was a terrible decision, Campbell Hatton knows that. And to be honest with you, Ryan went to his own backyard in Spain. Um, that's where he resides. And it was a sweltering night, the heat was unbelievable. And it was six rounds. Six rounds in his full pro fight. And Ryan went in there and dismantled him. You know, got the rounds under his belt, looked comfortable. Didn't look overawed, didn't think of oh, I'm in the opponent's backyard. And looking back now, it's a very good win for Ryan because, you know, Campbell Hatton did struggle with him and Ryan dismantled him. So I know you can't really look into things like that, but it just shows you that Ryan is a good prospect, a serious prospect. It's not just words what I'm saying. I think you can see in the footage that he's a very, very well skilled fighter, very accomplished fighter. When I say accomplished, I mean with his skills. The win over Sonny Martinez is a fantastic win. It really was to go there so young in your opponent's backyard and be a good tricky fighter like that. That's a tick on the box now. And I think it, it holds Ryan in good standing. It really does. And I believe in the future you'll see him fight big fights. You'll see him beat big names. I really do. I back Ryan 100%. Next fighter is Keen McMahon. What you have to realise about Keen is his record, you might say, oh, he's had two losses, but he's fought serious prospects. Right? He's fought Dean, Sumber Dean Sutherland, who's from uh, Scotland. He's 12 and 0. He fought a boxer from Belgium called Anas Masadi. That was two fights ago in Belgium in his hometown. Now, this Masadi is a uh, very well thought of talent in Belgium. He's got serious backing. And Keen fought him. It was his first fight in the pandemic. He had Keen hadn't fought for two years, so he had to take the fight. And you know what? He was doing very well. He was boxing his head off for certain uh, stages. Yes, he got took out with a body shot, but Keen hadn't fought for two years. That is, that's not an excuse. That's a fact. Um, you know, took that fight. He was brave enough to take that fight against a serious prospect because he backed himself. Unfortunately, he didn't come off, but he learned a lot. And he didn't get blasted out with it. It was a very competitive fight. 
up into he got stopped. Keane, very good body puncher, very tough fighter, very accomplished in there, knows his way around the ring, decent amateur, won numerous Irish national titles. But he's a good fighter, Keane, he really is. Again, he's not signed from anyone at the moment, keeping his options open, and he's looking to he's looking to fight big fights. He's, he's only a phone call away. Right, he wants the big fights, he's a dangerous fight for anyone, and he's a good fighter, Keane, he's an all-action fighter. If you want excitement, he'll provide that for you, so keep your eye on Keane McMahon. Next fighter is uh, John Cooney, 25 years of age. John is a rough diamond. Didn't have an extensive amateur career, took a break from boxing. When John came to Ray Walk's gym, he just wanted to fight again. He wanted to be a professional fighter. He thought his style suited to the pro game. And I remember Stephen telling me that he can seriously bang. He's a dangerous southpaw, super featherweight. If I want maybe fight a lightweight as well. And he's a dangerous fighter, John. He's got power. He's he's got a bit of that. Uh, he's got a bit of a red mist about him where he just loves to fight. He, he'll fight anyone. Literally not bothered. He'll do not matter who you are, where you're from, he'll get in there and he'll fight whether he gets knocked out or knocks someone else out, he'll fight. Um, very exciting fighter. It's, I know Steven has really polished his game now. He's not just going in head first with the red mist on. He's really thinking about what he's doing and I've seen him spar world-class fighters and I can see him developing, developing at every stage. He's now thinking about his game. You know, he's got decent hand speed, good power, goes to the body. Now, and if he hits you, he's got a very good straight left hand down the pipe. If he hits you with that, you're going to fucking know about it. And I, I believe John is a fan friendly fighter. I think he's a very exciting fighter to watch. I think he'll be a great fighter, crowd pleasing fighter. Again, I'm a promoter. I'm calling this guy up. And if you want excitement, he's going to provide it for you. I really believe that John Cooney will provide excitement. And he's another fighter to watch. He really is. Last fight is Paddy Nevin. Paddy, Irish heavyweight, which is very, very uncommon. You don't really see a lot of Irish heavyweights. And I tell you what, Paddy Nevin has got hands. He can fight. He's got a lot of boxing skill. He's, you would, many people wouldn't have heard of Paddy. But believe you me, he can fight Paddy. Good hand speed for a big guy. Decent power. And he can box rings around you. I mean, if, I, if he was to fight Alan Babich, believe you me, I'd back Paddy to beat him. I really would, <laughs> you know. I'm, I'm not just saying this. He's got legitimate boxing skill. He's unknown, right? His profile isn't big, but he can fight. And if he gets the phone call, back him. <laughs> because I'm telling you, he's uh, he's an unknown talent, Paddy Nevin. Not saying he's going to be a world champion, but he's got legitimate boxing skills. He knows his way around the boxing ring. So there are the fighters, and... With this channel, you're going to see a lot of a Walks gym, as with other gyms, but we're going to give you a bird's eye view of what it takes to get to the professional game, to climb through the professional game, because it's a shark tank, it really is. These boys have got it all against them. They're battling for their careers. They've not got big promoters behind them. They've not got a... They can't fight in front of the home fans. They can't sell tickets in front of the home fans. You know, so... The odds are against them and they're going out there and they're backing themselves, you know. They're not in it just to take money and just to be the away fighter and just to say, oh, I've, I'm fighting a, I'm fighting a well-known fighter when they've got a week's notice and there's a few divisions above. They're not in it for that. They're backing themselves to get as high as possible. And I wouldn't put my reputation on the line if I didn't think these guys were talented. I really wouldn't. Um, no one is going to walk through these guys. I believe a few of them can get to world level. Not everyone can be a world champion. There's so many facets in boxing. There's so many avenues you can go down, whether that's British level, whether you're an Irish champion, whether you're a European champion, whether you're a Commonwealth champion. You know, boxing is a hard sport, and to get to those levels is extremely hard. But I believe this gym have, has what it takes. I think just missing a big promotional outlet behind it. I think once that, once they get that, you'll see them blow up because they've got the, they've got the work ethic, they've got all the ability. Steve the Walk is a very underrated coach. He's a phenomenal coach, he really is. Well, people like Andy Lee, they'll tell you what a good coach Steve the Walk is. 
He's got a good reputation amongst in the boxing community. He just isn't well known because he's not had that fighter who's blown up yet. He's taught his fighters from scratch, Stephen, right? and that's what fight that's what many trainees don't do in this day and age. You know, they're not taking fighters from debuts to championship level or even from scratch. Tony Brown and Ryan O'Rourke had never boxed before before Stephen trained them, and look at the level they've got to. That shows you the level that Stephen is as a coach. And I think once Ryan and Tony and the other fighters, once they get to that stage, and he'll get the recognition he deserves because it's not all about me, me, me. He puts everything into that gym. Everything, blood, sweat, tears, doesn't put money first because you can't. <laughs> you don't make much money first. Everyone knows he's a boxing trainer and he's put everything into his that gym, right? And he'll reap the reward. So keep your eye out, keep your eye out for the channel. Follow these guys on social media because they're going to be a big part of the channel and I believe I'll be vindicated in many years to come. You'll see how these fighters progress and I believe in every single one of them. Like, comment, subscribe, let me know your thoughts.